Yo, Chuck. In this video, I'm going to explain the modulo operator. So recall the modulo operator it just finds the remainder from the vision. So if you had a number like 50 divided by 5, we call this number on the left-hand side the dividend, and this number that's dividing it called the divisor, okay? So this would equal 10, and we would all agree that's true. That's not a surprise. If we were to do 50 modulo 5, we're searching for the remainder of these two numbers. The answer is going to be 0, because there is no remainder. 50 is evenly divisible by 5. So that makes sense. Now let's do 50 modulo 8. Well, 8 doesn't go evenly into 50. So we need to do division here. So I'm going to do 50 divided by 8. And that will equal 6.25. So you can see we have these three steps I've written out. Divide, floor, and then bend the dividend. We've just done the divide part. Now we need to floor the result. So whenever you do a math floor, all you're doing is rounding down. So 6.25 would become 6. And the third and final step is just to bend the dividend. In other words, we're going to take the dividend number and add the opposite sign of the dividend number by multiplying the mod number with the floor value. So I'm going to do negative 8 times 6. It doesn't matter where you attach the negative to. You could do it like this because, again, you're just trying to get the opposite of the sign of the dividend number. So if this was negative 50, we would have no negative here because we want to get the opposite. But this is a positive 50, so I'll leave the negative on the right-hand side. We know that 8 times negative 6 is negative 48, so we're going to have 2 left over, and that is our answer. This makes sense when you think about it because... 8 times 6 equals 48, and then if you were to do 50 minus 48 like we just did, you get 2. Therefore, 2 is your answer for 50 mod 8. Let's do another example. Let's do 30, 30 mod 4. Okay? So again, first step, we need to do division. So 30 divided by 4 equals what? Looks like it equals 7.5. Step 2 is to floor this value that we got from the division. When we do that, we get 7. And then step 3 is to mod, or it's to bend the dividend. So we're going to take our dividend value and do the opposite sign of the mod number and our floor value of 7. So the mod value number is 4 times 7, and we got to attach a negative sign there to counteract whatever our dividend is. So you can do it like that. We know that 30 plus negative 4 times 7, that's really just negative 28. And that also is going to be 2. So that's how you do just basic modulo problems. And most programmers have a firm grasp of this. Now I'm going to start throwing in some edge cases, and then we'll see how they work out. So let's do an edge case where the dividend is smaller than the mod number. What do you think this is going to be? Well, this is actually 4. What about 2 modulo 99? What do you think this would be? This is 2. What about 3 modulo 5? This is 3. So you can see the pattern. Whenever the dividend is smaller than the mod number, the answer is always going to be the dividend. This only works, however, when they have the same sign. So if, if these are both positive, this would work. And if these were both negative, this would work as well. It would just be negative 2 instead of a positive 2. It gets different. This breaks down when the signs are different. If one is negative and one is positive. I'll show you that in a second. But for now, let's prove that these answers are correct. So I'm going to run through the three-step process again. But now we have a dividend that is smaller than our mod number. So 4 divided by 100. That's going to equal 0 0.04, I believe. 0 0.04. So now we're going to floor this value, right? Well, 0 0.04 floored would just be 0. Okay, so we're going to now do our bend the dividend portion. We take the dividend plus the opposite of the sign of the dividend is. So we can do negative times 100 times 0. 
Well, anything times zero is just going to be zero. So this becomes zero, and then four plus zero would be four. So you can see this logic even holds true when the dividend is smaller than the mod number. Let's do another one real quick just to prove this. Let's do three mod 77 equals three. So if I took three divided by 77, that's going to equal 0 0.038. If I floor that value, like the second step says, 0 0.038 becomes zero. And then finally bend the dividend. We can just do, it doesn't really matter because we're just multiplying by zero anyways. And then, whoops, this should be a 77. And the answer is going to equal three because this ends out to be zero. So that is how you do it when the uh, dividend is smaller than the mod number. Let's do a example where both are negative. So if I had negative 22 mod negative four, what is that gonna equal? If we do negative 22 mod negative four, divide by negative four, sorry, that should equal a positive number because we're dividing by two negatives. That becomes 5.5. Second step says to floor this value. So if we floor 5.5, we get five. And then now let's bend the dividend. So we have negative 22 plus the opposite sign of negative, which is positive. So I'm gonna take the mod number of four times five. And then our answer should be negative two. Pretty simple stuff. Let's do another example where both numbers are negative. Let's do negative 100 mod negative 55. So again, we're going to divide first. This will equal a positive number. Looks like 1.81 and some change. This is going to be rounded to one. So we're going to take the bend the dividend step now. I'm going to add the opposite of a negative, which would be 55 times one. And our answer looks like it would be negative something, negative 45. And that's your answer. So that's pretty easy. The same stuff we're doing before. Again, um, if the signs are the same like that, then it's just going to be the smaller of the two signs, the smaller of the two numbers, right? If, if the smaller number is in the dividend spot. So that, that holds true as well. Now let's do the tricky one, which is when one of these is negative and the other is positive. So we can start with this, with negative 55 modulo 100. Same concept, we're gonna do negative 55 divided by 100. That comes out to negative 0.55. So to round this number, you might intuitively think, oh, that's gonna be zero. But it's actually not zero because you're rounding down, remember? So if I round, negative 0.55 down, it's actually going to be negative one. And that is what tricks people up the most. So be aware when you're rounding down on a negative number, you're actually increasing the number per se. Okay. So now that we have that, we can do the third step and bend the dividend. So I'm going to take my dividend of 55 plus the opposite sign of 55. I'll take this one we just figured out from flooring times the 100 and that should equal 45 i believe positive 45 yes okay and that is your answer when you mod negative 55 with positive 100 let's let's do the reverse let's say we have 50 a positive 55 mod a negative 100 what's that can equal let's do our division step okay if i divide these two i get negative 0.55 I'm going to floor that value. Recall that it becomes a negative one. Now we're going to bend the dividend. So plus the opposite of whatever the sign the dividend is. I'm going to use that negative one that we just found from flooring. And then I'm going to take the 100. And this looks like it becomes negative 100 plus 55, which is negative 45. And that is your answer. So pretty simple stuff if you just follow this three-step process. And that will give you the answer on any number. Let's talk about ranges. So if I have a number like 100 mod 7, okay? Or I should just say, some, let's say some number. Some number mod 7. And we're assuming 
some number is larger than seven for this to hold true. I will be given a range of values from zero to six. When I say range, that's the, the numbers that can be shot out when I mod by seven, assuming that this num some number is larger than seven and they're both positive, okay? So if I had some number mod four, the range would be, what do you think? Zero through three would be the possible numbers that could be shot out from this computation. If I had some number modulo 19, the range would be zero through 18. So you can kind of see the pattern. Again, a word of caution, this pattern only holds true if they are both positive. Um, there's some ambiguity in regards to this concept. So it could really break down if this was negative or the dividend was negative, for example. So um, just, just be aware of that. But this is very helpful in use cases in programming because let's say you wanted to figure out if a number was even or odd. So the common uh, practical use case is you take the number mod two. If, if it equals zero, if the uh, remainder is zero, then you know you have an even number. If the remainder was one, then you know you have an odd number. And this makes sense because using that logic I just mentioned, we know that the range is gonna be zero to one, right? Because it's one less the mod number. Assuming both numbers are positive and the dividend number is larger. So that's a use case for that example. Okay, so that pretty much sums up how to solve any modulo problem. I think I've covered all the use cases, all the edge cases, when we have two numbers that are positive, when the dividend is negative and the mod is positive, when the dividend is positive and the mod is negative, and then when they're both negative. I showed all those examples. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.